Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. Something came up yesterday when I was watering everything. And first things first, that was a flush run. So things got watered in my normal way. Some didn't get very much. They got more of a trickle because they weren't in active growth. But um, I'll come over to something else in a minute as well that's becoming a priority. Um, that motorbike. <laughs> I was just going to say what on earth is that noise. Um, right and um, it became apparent because I picked up my um, TDS meter because I wanted to check something and I thought actually we need to do this a bit better. Now this is not scientific but it has a purpose. Now you know me I do reuse water to a degree so I have some water and I use that to water some plants and, and then it runs out quite quickly because I don't have much. And then I have some new water and start again. Um, and the plants very rarely get watered in the same order. So those at the end of a, a little batch of water won't be the same ones each time because that could be important. You know, the one that's at the start of a clean batch of water gets a proper flush. The next one, not quite so good and not quite so good, but the important thing I want to get at now is how bad is that build-up? Bearing in mind they got flushed yesterday following a flush. So what can go wrong? Well, what media was involved? How old was it? What sort was it? This is going to have an effect. And I'm just doing this to see to get a rough idea, there's nothing scientific as I said, a rough idea, and I've got to get cracking because my home shop is due soon and I don't want to interrupt the video. Right, so this is our own water. I'm going to pour it in there and we will not be reusing any water. Right, this plant here, these plants are all still very wet from yesterday. There's a reason for that. If there's any build-up of salts or anything like that, it's still there. Yeah? So, now this is the um, Odontidopsis Nellyila yellow. That has just been repotted. So this is in brand new charcoal, grow stones and bark. And it's new. So recently repotted. Let's pour some water through here and see what happens. Oops, I'm dribbling all over the place here. So that's a fair bit of water gone through there. The trouble is, the more you use, the more you dilute what's coming out. You see what I mean? If I only gave that a trickle, what came out the bottom could be relatively concentrated. That's why I said this is not scientific. So that's new media. And that. Oops, I'm going to need something a bit taller. I need to kick the um, I need to kick the thing up to get some depth with my meter. So I need something a bit taller underneath. So instead of the little glass, we'll have the big one. It's just to get some depth. So the pH meter, uh, sorry, the TDS meter gives a decent reading. Right now, that's come out at a TDS of 43. Now, bearing in mind the RO water started at 10, so the TDS level has gone up by 33 parts per million in brand new media. Does this set the path? As I said, I'm not reusing water, so let's get that little one out of the way. That one's done. I forgot where I got it from there, over there. Right, now this next pot. This was repotted some time ago and it's basically got, therefore, older bark, uh, looks like some, um, uh, what you call it, perlite, um, sponge rock, bigger perlite, and it's probably got some charcoal, but what's more important to me is it's actually got cocoa husk in it. So that's a mix that has got cocoa husk in it, yeah? Right, let's get some clean water again and we'll have a go at pouring some stuff through there. Let's see what comes out the bottom. 
I'm using roughly the same amount, but they're not the same pot size, you know, different media. This, has, this is not scientific, it's to give me an idea of what's going on. Boy, is that soaking wet now. <laughs> Watered two days on the trot instead of ten days. What have we got now? Now that says 50. Yeah? So that's added a TDS of 40 with that type of media. So obviously that type of media, older, with the cocoa husk, is holding more nutrients in it, despite being flushed twice on the trot. And then the last one that I'm going to play with has actually got some Welsh moss in it, along with other things. I don't know exactly what's in this one. A lot of the Welsh moss is on the surface because it was to, to get some roots going. And inside there we've got some cocoa husk. So that will have been potted around that time when I was using cocoa husk. Um, coming into bloom that one as well. Now as a side issue those blooms are covered in bugs. The buds are covered in bugs. Um, they look like mites to me. I don't think they're aphids, but they could be. But whatever they are, they shouldn't be here. Which brings me on to my next subject, which is the sulphur hotbox. Anyway, let's get this bit done. So let's pour a load through here. Out the bottom of that, oh, last. Uh, can I still do this? I forgot to empty the water, so we've now got two lots of water in there. The last lot was 50. Will this work? No, it won't. No, we need to we need to have proper fresh water each time and measure it individually, which now means I need another plant. I can't use that one because I've already washed the stuff through there. So have we got one that's similar? Yes, we have. Ugh, I can reach it. Sorry about that. Oh, it's another one with a bud on. Another one with a spike coming. There's a lot of it about. Um, now this again has got moss on it. And it has got cocoa husk in it. So this is in a similar, um, similar vein. Using up a lot of my RO water here, but um, ugh, I'm not getting through much this time of year. So. Not the end of the world, and I've used roughly the same amount poured through each pot. Right, let's get this one a go then. And that one comes out at <laughs> That's come out at 105. Now, okay, that is a bigger pot. So, consequently, oh, I don't know. Uh, let's try. Let's try and work some logic in here. If you pour the same amount of water through a small pot, a medium pot, and a big pot, do you get something worth knowing, or is it just gobbledygook? Difficult to tell. Anyway, I would surmise that what came out of that pot, which has got the Welsh moss and some cocoa husk in it, is far higher than the stuff that had the cocoa husk but without the moss, which was higher than new media without any moss or cocoa husk. That's really all I was trying to do, was just find that out and do it on camera so that other people can see it and have a think. I don't mean have a think and change all your media and repot everything, that's not what I'm on about. Just have a think about what's going on. And getting back to those bugs, Lynn is contacting the manufacturer of the hot box, sulfur hot box, with two simple questions. Does it leave a residue all over your plants if used properly? and following the instructions, which is all electrical devices off, fans, lights, everything, so that you have still air and used at an appropriate height below the ceiling, 
above the floor in an appropriate size room. So following the instructions. And then the question that I put in is why do all the instructions say it should be used in the dark? Is there a chemical reaction to the vapour given off by daylight or sunlight? And if so, what? Um, but it turns out I've already found the answer to that out, I think, in as much as the recommendation for doing it in the dark is there's far less likely to be anybody around to become, you know, to breathe it in. So uh, anyway, we're still waiting on the answer. Lynn said she was going to phone them today and remind them that they said they would answer her question straight away. And that was over three weeks ago. But we have had Christmas and New Year in between. So we should get a direct answer from the manufacturer relatively soon because I want that thing going in here as soon as I possibly can. And, and I may just override and just do it anyway. Um, the thing is, I want to be around while it's on. I don't want to go to bed and leave it on. I want to see what's going on. I would prefer to do it in the daytime simply because I've got the temperatures in the daytime to enable me to open the door and the window and turn the fan on to get rid of the stink after I've used it. You know, when it's done its job and the vapour's been in the room an amount of time, you need to clean the air. So, you know, I don't really want to be doing that at six o'clock in the morning when the temperature outside is only four or five degrees. I need to do it when we're having a mild spell and the outside temperature is in the teens, which is okay for the orchids and the change of air won't do any harm to the plants. That's daytime, not nighttime. So I may just go ahead and do it anyway, blow it. <laughs> uh, okay, so conclusions on the, um, the watering thing is that the new media is holding far less nutrients, but it's still holding some. And you have to wonder, where the hell have they come from? These plants haven't had any food for a month. They've had a flush followed by another flush with quite large intervals. So even in new media, there is still some residual um, feed. So when you're flushing your orchids, you're thinking, "Ooh, they're not getting any feed. Yes, they are. You're reactivating solids in your media that becomes available to the plant by adding water. It's not the flush you maybe thought it was. <laughs> And that was a proper flush with clean water, you know, not reused water. If you reuse water, the amount coming out of the bottom builds up because you've got what came out of the first pot goes back in and the second pot adds to it. And by the time you get to the fifth pot, it's probably, you know, building up a bit. Anyway, so uh, the oldest media with the coconut husk and the, span and the Welsh moss had the highest level of um, residual salts. And the one in between was the one with the cocoa husk, but without the moss. So um, my idea of getting rid of the moss and the cocoa husk has a purpose and has a reason. And it's going to be quite a lot of work because that's a lot of pots need doing. Um, but needs to be done. So uh, we'll crack on with that a bit at a time, but on a steady basis. So uh, two things in one there. But I have noticed on some plants that white dust which I thought was some sort of dust, is mites, and we need to shift them. So I need to get that hot box, hot box going. I've read a lot of reviews, and they say it does the job. And out of all the things you can have, it does thrips, yeah? Um, it does mites, um, and does other bugs, sorts out mildew, sorts out rots and stuff like that. It's like, it's like a wonder thing, like a wonder drug. <laughs> providing it does everything it says on the tin, which it's got to be given the best chance to be able to do what it says on the tin, which means following the instructions precisely and not bodging it and not half doing it. So uh, I'm working on it and that may happen within the next few days. We're having a mild spell at the moment. What I need is night temperatures that are in the low teens so that day temperatures take it up a bit from there and then I can do what I like out here during the day and if the windows and the doors have to be open and that big circulating whacked on, fan whacked on to change the air, so be it. So uh, anyway, no orchids yet again, but definitely orchid related. 
And food for thought, how old is your media? The older it is, the more it will hold on to nutrients. And when you've got plants like I've got at the moment that are hardly growing at all, if anything, having nutrients stored in the media is not doing them any good whatsoever. So changing everything back to bark or bark and charcoal, bark charcoal, grow stones, those sort of mixes where the water goes through and the media itself doesn't hold that much for very long. Water more often, clean out the pot as a consequence and not store stuff up for any length of time. So that's the goal. Right, and uh, I need to cut off now because um, time's getting on and as I said, there's going to be a man bing-bonging the door with his... Um, crates of my food stocks and wine stocks. That went down a bit over Christmas. <laughs> See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.